This portrait is perhaps one of the most profoundly human of all known images of James III in 1755 by the Italian artist Andre Soldi. It is the image of a defeated king without the usual pomp and circumstances afforded to a royal portrait. You see, James used to be full of hope, but like many, it evaporated. After James II of England was overthrown by Parliament for his Protestant daughter Mary and her husband William of Orange, the future lines of English monarchs would remain Protestant, and this caused a problem for his son who was Catholic, James Stuart. He was born from James II's second wife, Mary of Modena, and was brought up Catholic. His Protestant elder half-sisters Mary and Anne both became queen after their father's death, but James Stuart being the sole male legitimate heir, was unable to take the throne because Parliament enacted a law that prohibited Catholics from inheriting the crown. In short, this created a separation in which he tried to gain the throne as well as his descendants called the Jacobite succession. So there's two major historic pretenders, James Stuart and his son, Bonnie Prince Charlie. In this video, I will transform James Stuart to see how he might have looked in real life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I transform historic portraits we read about to see how they might have looked in real life using my Photoshop skills. So thank you for watching, subscribe for more historic recreations, and let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. James had dark brown eyes, a pale complexion with slight flushed cheeks and eyelids. James Stewart was born in St. James Palace in 1688. As a first male heir of James II, he was unexpected. His mother, was 29, considered past childbearing age, and he was born five years after her last pregnancy and three years after James II got the throne, and it was a surprise to everyone. But concerns of a Catholic son led to rumors of him being an imposter smuggled inside a warming pan, however that was quickly fed it away. When he was only a few months old, his father was usurped by his daughter Mary. So the king, his wife, and baby Stuart were rushed to France for their dear life. They stayed with Louis XIV, James II's first cousin. France, along with Spain and Modena, all treated James II as the rightful ruling monarch, and so James Stuart would grow up with all the hopes and dreams of one day going back to England as king, and he would spend many years trying his best. Meanwhile, in the eyes of France and Spain, his half-sister Mary and brother-in-law William of Orange were ew. Then another sister, Louisa, would be born in France in 1692, and then their father would die in 1701, Stuart would be 13, and his mother would die in 1718 in France. So what happens next? Basically, when his half-sister Anne gets the throne of England after her sister Mary, she wants to make peace with France as part of the end of the war of the Spanish succession. But the condition is that France has to kick James Stewart out. Meanwhile, James had an opportunity to take the throne if he would convert to Protestantism, according to the French Minister of Foreign Affairs and a secret alliance with the Tory administration. However, James, a devout Catholic, replied to the minister, I have chosen my own course, therefore it is for others to change their sentiments. As a result, in August 1714, James's second cousin, the Elector of Hanover, George Louis, a German-speaking Lutheran, who was the closest Protestant relative of the now deceased Queen Anne, became king of the recently created Kingdom of Great Britain as George I. James was not happy about this, having a stranger on his throne. So the following year, Jacobite uprisings started happening in Scotland and Cornwall to put James III onto the throne. He was 27 in 1715. There was the Battle of Sheriff Muir, which failed, then the Battle of Preston, that too failed. He set up courts in Scotland, but got sick from the icy winter and then turned back to France. Meanwhile, his rebel supporters abandoned him, and so the whole thing just sucked. Then, on top of that, Louis XIV, his close ally, died, and the French found James an embarrassment, and so he had to leave, finding refugee in the papal lands with the Pope. The Pope gave him a life annuity and a palace in Italy, where he could establish his Jacobite court, but he continued to suffer from melancholy. Between 1719 and 22, around four more attempts were tried to attain the throne, which all ended in failure, and from 1746 
there were no more plots to restore James in England, ideas yes, but nothing really solidified. His hopes would forever be smushed as he realized perhaps he would never be on the throne. James Stewart was treated well in Rome though. He began to create a Jacobite peerage, which was recognized on the continent, but not in England. His court in exile became a popular stop for English travelers, making a grand tour regardless of political affiliation. For many, it functioned as an unofficial consulate. Those in need of medical attention preferred being treated by one of their own countrymen. James died in 1766, he was 77 years old from lingering illness, and his claimed reign of 64 years, only Queen Elizabeth II would surpass that in 2016. James married Princess Maria Sobieska, daughter of King John III of Poland, and they had two children, Charles and Henry. Henry became cardinal while the elder Charles continued his father's claim to the throne. Unfortunately, at the death of James Stuart, Rome too began to recognize George I as King of Great Britain and Ireland, which put a damper on James's heir Charles's cause. And that is just a little bit about how the Jacobite succession started. I hope you enjoyed this video, subscribe for more historic recreations. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow, it allows me to continue making more content for you. I do have James II as well as Queen Anne and George I all on my channel. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next, I do make a list of all your suggestions, and I will see you in the next one.